Welcome to MOOC and PTL course on Bioengineering, an interface with biology and medicine. Let us kind of first start with some basics, some terminologies. When we say genotype, it means all the genetic contents uh, of a given individual, all those genetic information and phenotype, how actual individual looks like, their morphology, their phenotype characteristics. Now let us kind of uh, discuss this part in context of Men Mendel's experiment. So Gregor Mendel, he was a scientist who did genetics experiment on the pea plant, on the garden pea. And uh, while he was looking at pea plants, he observed there are many contrasting characteristics present in the pea plant. And uh, he, he thought that those are some sort of characters which transmit from one to next generation. And for the same, now we say those heritable factors as a gene, so for the same factors, there might be different alleles which are present there. So one gene might be having different allele forms. So let's say this is a, the, uh, a plant, a flower which is shown here is, is a purple colored flower. Now, if a gene codes for it, uh, which is having dominant interest, so let's say capital P. Now, uh, a recessive form of that will be a small p, right? So first I want to make you familiar with the terminologies dominant, recessive, homozygous, heterozygous. So let's kind of do uh, one Punnett square cross and, and try to understand these terminologies. By the way, in genetics, it will be a good idea that you can open your own notebooks. And as we go along, there will be certain problems for you to also try out. Uh, <clears throat> it looks very easy, but you know, when you do it, you'll be more confident. So both from the sperm and the ova, from the male and female parts, let's say now you have these gametes. So it is very straightforward, but let me kind of now ask you uh, some terminologies here. So let's ask how many homozygous recessive are here? Homozygous recessive. Somebody rightly mentioned one. So a small p is the recessive characteristic, right? Dominant is the capital P. So how many, how many we have homozygous uh, dominant here? One, capital P, capital P. How many are heterozygotes? Which are 50 percent, right? So 50 percent are heterozygous. Now, what will be the uh, genotype here? Genotype means genetic contents of this. <coughs> one, is to, one is to two is to one. Everybody agrees to him? And what will be phenotype? Y3? Because one is dominant, right? P, capital P is dominant. So I'm sure now you already know yourself all the terminologies. So in this case here, uh, the genotypic ratio will become 1 is to 2 is to 1. And phenotypic ratio, all those which are dominant, which is purple in color, is the phenotypic ratio as compared to the white, which is the recessive color, right? So this is how I think it's a good idea for us to learn the terminologies. And this is what you know Mendel was looking at it. But before I come to Mendel's experiment, I thought to make you familiar with the properties and these terminologies. So in this case, we got three purple and one white. Ratio was three is to one, which is phenotypic ratio. And we have one is to two is to one, which is the genotypic ratio. Again, let's kind of you know go back and think about at the cell level. We have already talked about it. And from the individuals, we have billions of cells. Each cell contains those nucleus. Within those, we have the DNA contents, chromosome. From those, we have the genes. 
what mendel was thinking that these genes what we think now is the sequence of nucleotides at a specific place which contains some of the heritable factors which contains some information which could inherit from one to next generation uh, later on people uh, realized that this could be termed as a gene so now what we think is gene is what mendel already thought that time as the heritable factors which can transmit from one to the next generation and there could be different alleles of a given gene which are having uh, you know one copy from each parents so in this case let's say we say the capital p and small p right those are for the same color characteristic purple or the white so these are the two alleles of a given gene which are inherited from the parents so as you can see here the alternative variations of these genes are known as alleles for purple flower on this chromosome or the white flower here these are the pair of homologous chromosomes so each organism harbors two copies of a given gene a dominant allele has the effect but recessive does not show an effect and that's where dominant is known as dominant characteristic which is going to show its properties now in in this context of purple versus white color uh if you look at this sequence of the gene which codes for the purple color versus the sequence of this gene which is for the white color it is exactly same just one base pair change from c to a that's the only change here but because of that one change so when we talk about the sequences we are talking about only you know some letters of atgcs they have to be in a defined manner and sometime you know just by that one change of one base uh, can result into lot of uh, misregulation lot of deformities and many times in the cancer patients people find out lot of mutations happens sometimes something gets shift some base pair shifts and therefore the entire protein coding sequences can be changed so in this case is very you know interesting example here you can see that you know because of one base pair change this is going to make enzyme which is required to give the purple color whereas this one has deficiency it cannot make the enzyme for purple color it's only shows the white pattern so same gene sequence just with one base pair change this is why these are alleles of that given gene and it is going to show you the two different properties of purple versus white color so now let's come and talk about mendel what he did and his experiment on the inheritance concept uh <coughs> So Mendel was doing experiments not for a job, not for the sake of a profession. He was doing these things out of his interest, and he was actually a monk who was, uh, you know, studying the pea plant by growing them in his own uh, backyard. And at the age of 21, he joined this Augustinian uh, monastery. But he did not like that too much, and then he felt that he should do more advanced study in physics and chemistry. So in fact he was much more interested to study physics chemistry math not biology uh sometime you know you may not like a subject but but you might be able to still make an original contribution to the field that you will be remembered for that contribution so after he returned back from the university then he again joined uh, that monastery and started teaching in a local school and he was just growing the garden garden peas in the garden and then he was making a very close observation very meticulous notes of what is happening from one generation to the next generation so each time when he do a cross he will count that you know what is the properties he is looking at how many seeds is growing how many pea plants made out of it what are their each characteristics and because he was doing it so meticulously he was able to come with certain mathematical numbers and he was very astonished himself that there are many uh, properties which are showing similar kind of you know patterns so then he was able to formulate certain rules and certain laws which became mendelian laws of genetics so he chose only true breeding varieties now you know does it make any sense you know what is the true breeding variety and why he need to choose the true breeding variety so mendel chose only true breeding varieties is a statement for his experiments which he did on the pea plants what could be true breeding means Uh, somebody tried saying that the no mutation any better explanation homozygous 
so you are ensuring that if it was purple color coming purple color can come out of either you know it can be capital p small p or capital p capital p so you are ensuring that they are going to contain the same characteristics from one to next generation so therefore he was choosing those uh, characteristic and those plants are true breeding so in 1860 he was able to come up with the law of inheritance to define the genetic principles so what are these heritable traits these are heritable traits are uh, many characteristics like you know some type of eye colors some time hair different type of hair patterns are there different type of eye colors yes so how exactly do you choose true breed varieties <coughs> so ideally if you are crossing uh, a purple colored one with purple colored one and you are still gen getting the progeny is purple colored you are ensuring that you are doing one to next generation those crosses and still you are getting purple colored they are not segregating it will do the true breeding does that answer to your question as well so what are the genetic principles which accounts for the transmission of these traits well many of the rules which were deciphered by mendel as the hereditary rules so i'm sure you can uh, you know observe different patterns of hair different colors different type of eye colors all of these are natural variations which are there and they still keep you know uh, passing from one to the next generations and we we do see that there are heritable characters heritable variations so how to define hereditary people have tried to come up with different hypotheses that how to define hereditary uh, one hypothesis is known as particulate hypothesis which is essentially you are playing the cards you are shuffling the cards and while shuffling the cards from you know uh, while distribution it is always random right you have no idea that how these cards are going to be distributed to different players from one to second to third player genes are like that from one to second to the third generation probably you are shuffling the cards and that is known as particular hypothesis which became more popular so here you know genes can be shuffled and passed along from the one to next generation and the hypothesis was blending hypothesis it means from the two parents genes are coming and they are blended like paint so like paint color and they are going to give rise to a different color like from the blue and the yellow paints if they get blend they will make the green color so this hypothesis is not as popular uh, but these are again some hypothesis to explain how to define hereditary so mendel chose pea plant uh, of course because of availability of pea in the garden what he was uh, you know where he was in that monastery uh, he felt that you know uh, these are the experimental system which can be done very fast very short generation timing and it has many characteristics at least seven he observed which are derived looking from the you know same gene having different allelic forms then uh, you know you can generate large number of seeds and you can uh, make those countings in any of the biological experiment the statistics become very important because you have to ensure that you have enough n to prove or disprove your hypothesis and that's it was again good system here because if you think about doing experiments in the animal system if you'd have chosen mouse or you know any other uh, animal model then it may not have been so easy for him to grow that many number of you know model system to do statistics and you cannot grow them so fast either he was also having full control about doing the self pollination or the cross pollination of the pea plants for the breeding purpose so as a result all of these things were quite helpful for uh, mendel to think about doing genetic experiments as we talked he chose only true breeding varieties he was crossing them to multiple generations only selecting those which are showing the same pattern and he selected only one characteristics at a time for his studies uh, which are having distinctive alternative forms so for example purple versus white color of the flower that is one characteristic he tried to study we already talked about uh, some part of that flower positions whether it's axial or terminal seed color is it yellow color or green color seed seed shape it can be round or wrinkle shaped pot shape it can be in flatted or constricted pot color green or yellow or stem length tall or dwarf so many people say that mendel was actually very lucky because you know in the same system he was able to get 
for the same gene different allelic forms and many properties which is usually, usually not present in many other plants or many other animal systems. So he was pretty lucky to, you know, randomly selected pea plant as an experimental system. And he did all the experiment which became very reproducible and, you know, now we have very strong foundation for those laws. So these characteristic variants are called traits. So to elucidate principles of hereditary, the inheritance of each trait is determined by the units or the factors which we now know, say and know as a gene, which are passed on to descendants which remain unchanged. Individuals inherit one such unit from each parent and then they transmit from the one to the next generation. So now brings to the Mendel's first law, which is law of segregation. So just to you know, kind of brief you, the, this is the stamen or the male part of the, uh, this flower, pollen producing organ. This is the carpal or the female part, which is egg bearing part of the flower. So for doing this experiment, he was ensuring that, you know, uh, for doing the crosses, it has to be very well uh, under the control condition, just so that there is no cross pollination from one to other different flower and different characteristics. Whatever he want to study, only those pollination he wanted to do that. So he cross pollinated only two contrasting and the true breeding pea varieties. So you know, purple versus white, for example, or, you know, long versus short, or looking at the, you know, uh, yellow versus green, seed, seed shape, etc. So, uh, his doubt and question is that, you know, what is, is that dominant or recessive we are looking at over there or not? So, all you want to ensure here, that you are only studying the homozygous kind of characteristics because, you know, capital P, capital P or capital P, small p, both are possibility for purple color. But can you choose only capital P, capital P and, and keep growing them further for your experiment? Because then only, you know that you are only talking about capital P, capital P versus small p, small p. So then you have the good experiment to be done. Right, so a uh, lot of interesting ideas, of course. Uh, how, you know, he was ensuring these things, as I showed you, he was uh, doing these pollination experiments in a very controlled condition, so that there is no cross-pollination happens from the neighboring plants, which can influence these characteristics. So if he's only growing the purple-colored one, and then he's growing white-colored one separately, then only he will do the cross of those two to ensure that only the true breeding varieties cross can happen. So hybridization is the phenomenon which is mating or the crossing of two true breeding varieties. And this is known as the F1 generation or the filial generation. Just get familiar with the terminology. P means parental generations, parents. F1 is the filial or the, uh, the progenies. So in the first, when, they, when he did the cross, the, the first generation looked like all purple colored. So now uh, let's talk about his crossing experiment where he crossed purple versus white, two of the contrasting traits. So this is dominant color a trait, the purple color, versus white is a recessive trait. Now P generation or the parent generations, these are true breeding parents, purple or white. F1, all of them showed purple pattern. And when he again crossed them further, it distributed into the purple versus white, three is to one kind of ratio. And he did this experiment on many of the characteristics, not only the purple and white, among all of the contrasting characteristics of different uh, P properties which he was studying. And therefore, he was able to come up with some conclusion that looks like, you know, they distribute in a very specific ratio. It is not very random phenomenon. So the F2 generation is when he's doing the F1 hybrid, self-pollinating them, and then they are resulting into large number of these seeds which he was growing further and then able to come up with these numbers. So again, what you can see, there are large number of flowers which he was counting. So 700 purple flower with 220 or so of white flower. So this is what then he felt that these are the allelic forms of a given gene or factors which are showing the same property but only one contrasting difference is found. This is how the cross will look like. So we already briefly talked about the 
Ponet is square. So if this was the cross, the purple flower versus white flower, these are the gametes, capital P and small p will be derived. In the F1 generation, you will have this hybrid, capital P, small p. From the male and the uh, female parts, the egg and the sperm, you are doing this cross, and that results into this ratio of 3 is to 1 of the phenotype. As I mentioned, uh, he did this on many properties, not only the purple and white, also on the flower position. And the ratio was not exactly 3 is to 1. It was, you know, 3.15 or 3.14 is to 1. But he was finding similar kind of pattern, similar numbers in many properties. So the ratio of dominant versus recessive trait was 3 is to 1. Now question is, uh, if we have one purple flower, how are we going to determine the genotype? Whether the purple flower is capital P, capital P or capital P, small p, right? If we have purple flower, it can be two properties possible. So, let's imagine two situations. One is capital P, capital P and second is capital P, small p. Both of them are purple flower. If I give you some seeds, and I tell you that all these seeds are going to make the flowers which will look like purple, can you determine the genotype or their genetic makeup? Are these capital P, capital P or capital P, small p? So Mendel was doing, doing this experiment himself. He was doing a lot of back crosses. And one of the cross which he observed, so please do try yourself as well. Whatever I, I do, you should try it out yourself. So we have two possibility, one is capital P, capital P, second is capital P and is small p. He made a cross of these two conditions with homozygous recessive, which was small p, small p. With this cross, now if you derive yourself, So, what kind of numbers can you get now in the interval ratios? In the second possibility, what is the ratio? 1 is to 1. So, <laughs> yeah, so you have uh, 1 is to 1 or 50% here because uh, these are going to show you the purple colored flowers. These are going to show you white colored flower. So, if the genotype or the uh, genetic composition of that was capital P, small p, then you will see 1 is to 1 ratio. If they were all going to show you purple colored flower pattern, it means genotype of that seed was capital P, capital P. So this is how this kind of test can be done, which is known as test cross. And test cross, keep in mind, you are doing always with the homozygous recessive. Test cross, always done with the homozygous recessive characteristic. So in this case, with the two crosses which we just talked, you have possibility of capital P, capital P or capital P, small p, and you are crossing with the homozygous recessive characteristic of a small p, small p. Either all offsprings were purple colored, or 50% of them were purple and 50% of them were white colored. I think it's good to be more attentive in genetics lecture. Uh, it's not only interesting, but also a lot of questions are going to come based on that for sure. Uh, and as long as you know how to make these crosses, Punnett squares, uh, you can very easily do these kind of questions. So uh, please make sure that you are trying all of these things yourself. Whenever we say that, make this cross, do try out yourself. Looks very easy sometimes, but still try to do that. So breeding an organism of unknown genotype with a recessive homozygote is known as test cross, which can reveal the genotype or the genetic composition of that particular organism. So what we can conclude from this section so far, that the law of segregation suggests that genes have alternative forms uh, or the alleles. There are two alleles for a given trait, which is heritable, and those can get separated during the gamete formation. 
It also explains that the ratio is approximate 3 to 1. And a trait may not show up in the individual, but you can uh, still obtain that information from the test cross, which actually can be passed from one to the next generation. That brings us to the second uh, law of Mendel, which is law of independent assortment. Mendel, when he was doing the experiments, of course, he did not make the law that time. So he was doing the experiments, he was making those observations. After looking at many experiments giving the same ratios, then only he was able to come up with certain hypothesis that this particular thing is working well. And now this can become a rule. So in terms of looking at this now, he started thinking about, you know, earlier we studied only one characteristic, one gene and two allelic forms of that. Can we now start looking at two genes, two different properties, different allelic forms? So for example, seed color and seed shape. This is a round seed and yellow color. So we are looking at two properties now, right? And that is known as dihybrid. When we are talking about studying two traits simultaneously, that is known as the dihybrids. Or you are talking about a seed which is green in color, but either it is round or it can be wrinkled. So you are looking at two different properties here. And to denote them, you can say it is capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R, or small y, small y, small r, small r. So although I mentioned to you already that Mendel derived his law as a law of independent assortment, but let's assume the, the possibilities that what could have been either, either dependent or independent. So for doing this experiment from the gametes from the parent generations resulted into F1 generation which is this hybrid capital Y small y capital R small r. So now let's come uh, let's assume that Mendel was not sure that what should be hypothesis are the two properties which we are studying at the same time they are dependent or they are independent. I am sure by now you know the answer it is independent, but let us say that you know uh, he was not sure that what should be the property. So from this seed which is the hybrid, now we have capital Y small y, capital R small r, there can be two possibilities. Either the gametes which are derived are having the capital Y capital R, small y small r, only this kind of characteristics are getting distributed or it can have multiple ways of distribution capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, and additionally we have capital Y, small r, and small y, capital R. So there are two possibilities now, right? Can you please start doing the cross yourself and, and tell me that what will be the answer from these crosses? So Mendel's law were actually based on the result which he obtained. But you know, hypothesis is something when you are making hypothesis, you have no idea that what the results will be. So at that time, you are essentially just, you know, exploring all possibilities. It could be, you know, multiple characteristics might be depending on each other or they might be independent of each other. Both are possibilities, right? So if these are the characteristics, so now how best to do the crosses and derive the conclusion out of it? If you do the crosses, what will be, if this is the gametes, then what will be your progeny look like? Please do that first. You have to derive all the, no, this is, this is not correct. For this one, you have to have all of these gametes. Because from the male and female both, you have to derive. So I think, you know, uh, looking at things sometimes looks, looks much easier. But when you start doing yourself, then you realize that uh, you can make mistakes easily, right? All right, so just to save time, uh, if you do this particular cross here, so male and female gametes, which you have capital Y, capital R, and small y, small r. If that was the case, then the, the ratio could have been 3 to 1. But what he found was something different. He found the ratio as 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So the round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow, and wrinkled green, they are showing phenotypic ratio as 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 which was different observation than what he was actually assuming. If the characteristics were depending on each other, the ratio could have been 3 to 1. But because they were independent, they were sorted independently, then the ratio observed was 
9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So each pair of alleles segregate independent of other pair of alleles during the gamete formation. So from this section we can conclude that the second law of inheritance of Mendel uh, was uh, observed based on the studying two characteristics at a time. And he stated that two or more genes, they can be assorted independently. And each pair of these alleles segregate independently during the gamete formation. After crossing the experiment, then he observed the ratio which is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So Mendel, when he uh, you know, proposed these laws and brought those calculations, those numbers, uh, he published in a small uh, journal and that time, uh, you know, as I mentioned, he was not doing these things for just doing research for and science from publication point of view. He was doing these things out of his own curiosity and he was not biologist per se. He was uh, just doing these observations based on his interest of observing the nature and the plants. So he was not very popular. Nobody knew about his findings. He published already his results in 1866. But people were not aware of what Mendel did and uh, it just got published in some journal which nobody noticed much about it. Many scientists over the period in 19th century uh, in independently they were working on different genetic laws. Also they were looking at Drosophila or the fruit fly as a uh, model system to study the inheritance. And interestingly they were coming with the conclusions which were exactly same what Mendel already made several years ago. So these two, three scientists, Hugo de Vries, Eric Schimark, and Carl Corrins, they made the same conclusions what Mendel already made in 1860s. So then Mendel was kind of, you know, uh, people started recognizing his contribution. And in many ways, the Mendelian laws were rediscovered because now people have much more confidence that what Mendel has proposed was very accurate. And three independent scientists has, have confirmed their findings, confirmed his findings. So, now everybody started, you know, recognizing and appreciating Mendel's contribution and eventually now he is recognized as the father of genetics. So, you know, as I mentioned, it's, uh, let's be open to, you know, various observation, the things which we like to do it and irrespective of which discipline you study because you never know your, you know, training in one area but your observation towards your interest can give rise to certain different output and those will be much more fundamental, much more original contributions for any given field. So you are now familiar with the two main Mendelian laws of segregation and independent assortment. In the next lecture, we will discuss some of the examples of Mendelian genetics. You will see how many human traits follow Mendelian pattern of inheritance and how inheritance pattern are often more complex than predicted by simple Mendelian genetics. Thank you.